in this episode six, the final episode of this series, we thought we would step back and have a look at uh, the episodes that have gone and see, try and get an overview, try and see what themes have emerged. What have we learnt could be the title of this particular episode. You're listening to On the Tip of My Tongue, a podcast dedicated to raising awareness about aphasia. If you're enjoying the podcast and finding it helpful, please subscribe to it by clicking on the support the show link in the description. Thank you. Hi, everyone, uh, and welcome to On the Tip of My Tongue, the podcast that's dedicated to raising awareness about aphasia. I'm Rob Edwards. And I'm Jonathan Hirons. So we're in our studio in South London, where all the magic happens. In this episode six, the final episode of this series, we thought we would step back and have a look at uh, the episodes that have gone and see, try and get an overview, try and see what themes have emerged. What have we learnt could be the title of this particular episode. And yeah, and I think the, the, the idea right from the beginning was to for for me to try and show rob what aphasia is about and uh, we've obviously had some um we've had some guests who've given their versions of of what aphasia can be for them and for other people so we're going and that's what we're going to talk about now well one of the things that came singing out to me uh, in the course of these interviews was just how much prejudice and stigmatization surrounds the condition of aphasia it seems to be that when anybody has trouble with their words getting their words out so to speak other people immediately jump to the conclusion oh they're do lally or they've lost their marbles they've lost all their intelligence which is so absolutely not the case and trevor uh, dr trevor powell in the episode where we interviewed him, the clinical psychologist, he told a little story, which is very telling, I thought, about uh, Karen, a young woman, 24, 25, something like that. Um, one of his, uh, one of the people who came to his drop-in clinic, and she had a, a, a expressive aphasia. By that means she could, she could, she she had great trouble getting her words out, although her understanding and comprehension were excellent. And she could only say, yes, 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 no, 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 no. And somebody else in the room said to Dr. Powell, oh, what mental age is Karen then, do you think? And uh, Karen, who understood what he said, immediately stuck up two fingers at him. So we had an analogy which we used in, in, in the course of the series, um, which an analogy which I must say got the thumbs up both from Barbara Chalk speech and language therapist, and also from uh, Dr. Powell, the, the clinical psychologist. An analogy between the human brain and a computer. Whereas if you think of a computer as having a hard drive and software working on the hard drive, then aphasia is a glitch in the software. It's not attacking the hard drive like a very serious, you know, cognitive disease like dementia or Alzheimer's would have in older people. That is something attacking the hard drive, erasing memories, real cognitive ability to know who you are, where you are, to be able to think properly. Aphasia is just a glitch in the software. One phrase that kept coming up during the series was that aphasia is a hidden disability which I think had particular resonance for you, John, didn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, it's something that... Uh, aphasia is a very strange beast, as it were, um, and it, it, it hits people in different ways. And in my case, although I, I sound fairly fluent, it's actually quite hard work for me to do this. And, um, for example, although I can read to myself a newspaper or whatever i can't read out loud i'll get into a terrible muddle so although it, it looks as though i'm functioning you know normally actually it's not true at all and it's as i said it's quite hard work for me to 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 keep this going 
when you did the Michael Shan ep- uh, episode, episode three, I, I remember saying to you after, I said, oh, well, that was great. You know, you did that so well, John. You know, you were very fluent and no one would have known there's anything wrong with you. As indeed, he didn't. He said that, didn't he? He did, uh, yeah. He, he said, said I, I, I wouldn't real. I don't realize. I, I couldn't. I didn't. I don't realize. I haven't. Re- oh, I can't say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, whatever. Go on, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> you, he couldn't realize. He didn't realize you had anything. <laughs> you got me at it now. He didn't realize you had anything wrong with you. And I thought, well, why don't you do more of these interviews? You know, why don't you take the lead? You know, I thought I'll, I'll just have a cup of tea. Um, but it's not. No. You said to me how effortful it was. It is even though you appear fluent in your speech and so on, how how much effort goes into what used to be an effortless, um, you know, process? I used to, to uh, give presentations and I've done voiceovers for, for for little films that I've done and so on and so on, and I can't do any of that now. That was It, it would really be hard work for me to do it and I probably wouldn't do it properly at all. So... A huge theme that comes through in all, all the episodes, all the interviews that we did, was, of course, caring. Caring for people with aphasia, and indeed, caring in general. Because, you know, people get fixed in hospital quite quickly after a stroke or after some head injury, and they want you out because they need the beds. It's then that the real business begins, and that always falls on the relative. And and that is something that I can relate to because um, in my uh, situation, um, I had a stroke, and I was out of hospital in f- five days um, once they'd they'd sorted me out. Um, but nothing after that. There was no backup really, until I got some speech therapy, which took a number of weeks to come through. And then the actual therapy sessions were um, were, were only about um, six, I think it was six weeks. Um, and that was it. And there's a, a problem with people who have a situation where they need help and there's no body to help them they have to fall on either a relative or a friend to look after them whilst they try and rehabilitate rehabilitate in episode three you interviewed michael shan who who is the head of carers support at carers uk and he said something really rather wonderful that stuck in my mind um he said that the vision of a society that recognises, values and supports carers should be achievable within our lifetimes. Now, I don't know whether he was being a bit over-optimistic. I hope that's right. Um, but he's certainly saying that our society at the moment does not recognise, value and support carers. And yet carers actually perform a huge service for our society. By the time you reach 50, this is another Michael Shen statistic that he gave us, by the time you reach 50, you have a 50% chance of becoming a carer. Carers UK research has found that carers contribute £162 billion to the UK economy. That's the equivalent of another NHS budget almost. But we mustn't be too pessimistic because, of course, there are an awful lot of charities out there. Um, Say Aphasia, uh, the charity which uh, uh, Barbara Chalk is a trustee of, and Headway, which uh, Dr Powell was, was involved with. So there is a lot of help there, but it is on a charitable basis. So how is the future looking for the treatment of aphasia? Well, in the next series, we'll be looking at the huge technological advances that are already coming down the line, both for the patient and for the therapist. See you then. To hear all episodes again, click on Support the Show in the description. 
You're listening to On the Tip of My Tongue, a podcast about aphasia, with Rob Edwards and Jonathan Hirons. Thank you for listening to this On the Tip of My Tongue podcast. We hope you found it helpful and informative. Now, if you want more help and information about strokes and aphasia, please go to stroke.org.uk, say aphasia, that's S-A-Y, aphasia, or one word, dot org, or the aphasia page of nhs.uk. That was On the Tip of My Tongue, the podcast dedicated to raising awareness about aphasia. To listen to more episodes, click on Support the Show in the description. This has been a Buffalo Lounge production. Please follow Buffalo Lounge on all the socials.